Hey everybody, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here, and today we have to talk about Russia because the Department of Defense has confirmed something that we've pretty much known and seen evidence worldwide of, and that is that the Russian government has been meddling in U.S. elections since at least 2014. We're not the only one, but obviously the Department of Justice is ours, and so by virtue of that, they are looking at pursuing action, and I think it's going to be a coin toss if this actually goes anywhere, especially on the, the individual that is accused. We'll talk about that. Now, a billion publications have obviously written on this uh, and talked about this so far, but I'm actually cribbing off of Suzanne Smalley of CyberScoop, who I thought had a really great write-up on this, nice and concise, uh, not to mention some really interesting interviews with some really interesting people. So here's what's going on. A federal grand jury basically indicted a Russian national on charges of attempting to disrupt U.S. elections beginning as early as 2014 and spreading disinformation to essentially further Russia's political aims and infiltrate various American political organizations to essentially carry out their plans. Now, this indictment, which was unsealed yesterday, uh, basically Friday, paints a portrait of essentially this Russian operative who was carrying out a sophisticated and potentially harmful campaign to damage U.S. democracy and obviously attempt to fuel extremism here in the United States. This is extremism, unfortunately, that we are seeing the unfortunate benefits of right now. Now, Assistant Attorney General for National Security Matthew Olson said in a statement also on Friday that the Russian national named in the indictment Alexander Viktorovich Ayanov quote, allegedly orchestrated a brazen influence campaign turning U.S. political groups and Russia uh, and U.S. citizens into instruments of the Russian government. Also on Friday, the Treasury Department announced sanctions against Ionov, saying that he donated money to organizations that Ru uh, Russian intelligence, uh, basically the Russian intelligence apparatus believed would divide Americans. This is something that I've written extensively on. You can go see the Internet Research Agency's 2016 advertisements uh, that they were putting out on Facebook. They spent about 130000 or so, if I recall, for about 3500 4000 different ads. And you can literally see them attempting to drive a wedge on one side saying, you know, uh, you know, support our boys in blue. Uh, you know, there are lies that they're they're basically, uh, you know, being brutal. And the other side is, you know, the, the police are beating minorities, so we have to stand up against the police. And they are literally sending these to different demographics in the same city cities. It's absolutely nuts. Now, going back to this, according to the Justice Department press release, Ayanov, who is based in Moscow, Russia, orchestrated, and I quote, a years-long foreign malign influence campaign that used various U.S. political groups to sow discord, spread pro-Russian propaganda, and interfere in elections within the United States. Now, Ayanov is the founder and president of the Anti-Globalization Movement of Russia, or AGMR, which is an organization headquartered in Moscow and funded by the Russian government, according to the Department of Justice. Now, he allegedly used AGMR to carry out Russian influence campaigns starting from 2014 until this March of 2022. So it looks like Ionov isn't going to be extradited. Russia and the United States are adversarial. We have no extradition treaty. Obviously, we're on the opposite sides of a literal war right now. And, I mean, when Russia <clears throat> arrested the core members of our evil earlier this year and the U.S. asked for extradition of those members since they have literally caused billions of dollars worth of damage to the U.S. economy, Russia didn't even bother to respond. And, obviously, they're now using our evil for their for their war in Ukraine. <clears throat> so, Ayanov isn't going anywhere. He is not going to be extradited. He's perfectly safe and comfortable in Moscow. But... And this is where it gets interesting because according to Gavin Wild, who was interviewed by, you know, by CyberScoop, he's a disinformation expert at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. There is actually a silver lining here. He said that he is hopeful that the charges will still have a quote unquote chilling effect on basically the co-conspirators that are sitting here in America. The indictment is the quote clearest signal yet that Moscow has been fo uh, fostering separatism and extremist movements in the United States. <clears throat> that is also according to Wild. Now on top of that, allegations that the Russian intelligence service FSB was, quote, running an agent who was spurring and funneling money to separatist movements like Calexit, end quote, are important developments, again, according to Wild. Now, if you didn't know, Calexit, which is interesting, is an organization that advocates for California to secede from the United States. It is referred to as an unnamed California secessionist group in the indictment, but other evidence uh, cited makes it clear that the unnamed group is indeed Calexit. Now, this also then makes me wonder... 
about things like Brexit over in the United Kingdom. I wrote an article a few years back before the pandemic for Forbes about how Russia was meddling and buying influence in elections all over Europe, not just the United States. This is not unique to us, even though, again, the Department of Justice is here in the United States looking out for U.S. interests. So, for example, the Five Star Movement in Italy uh, has been caught basically being deeply influenced by Russian cash. I wrote about that a few years back. This is the movement also, for example, that Steve Bannon here in the United States, uh, senior Trump advisor, has talked favorably about as well in the past. So it's interesting to see that this could all be interconnected in some way, shape, or form. Now, according to the indictment, Ayanov recruited political groups in Florida, uh, California, Georgia, and others and controlled them on behalf of the FSB by providing financial support. A lot of these were smaller donations, but obviously these things add up over time, trying to put their people into the proper place. So they're providing financial support, directing them to publish pro-Russian propaganda, and coordinating direct actions intended to bolster Russian interests. Ayanov also allegedly co uh, coordinated Russian media coverage of the U.S.-based group's efforts. We have seen, especially since the war in Ukraine started, that there have been uh, American commentators that have been played uh, repeatedly over and over and over that seem to either have pro-Russian positions or positions that Russia seems favorable in some way, shape, or form. So, for example, Tucker Carlson has been on uh, Russian TV constantly, meaning they're playing clips from his show from Fox News. I am not saying or accusing Tucker Carlson of being essentially a Russian spy or on the Russian payroll, but obviously his positions are favorable. And so the question is, again, how are all of these things interconnected, meaning is this influence just that good that people are buying into this and now they're putting out these positions that seem to align more with Russia than, than their own country's interests? It's going to be a very interesting thing to see. And again, I'm trying not to malign uh, you know, Tucker Carlson or anybody else that has been played for that matter since he is not the only one. But I point these things out because it's an interesting phenomena that we are seeing when essentially Russian national media can start holding up U.S.-based personalities as, you know, hey, they're on our side or see they've got it right but the u.s government doesn't i think it's a very interesting position now thomas ridd who is a cybersecurity scholar and john hopkins uh, university school of advanced international studies professor said and i quote and for the most part i will leave you with this this is the best documentation that we have that russia was doing a lot of uh, a lot doing what a lot of people suspected it would be doing behind the scenes, driving wedges in target countries, supporting extremist movements, in this case, secessionist movements. And we have seen a lot of those. Right now in uh, Eastern Oregon, for example, there is an entire movement to have several counties basically merge into Idaho, which is a much more conservative state, meaning they vote Republican over Democrat. Oregon typically votes Democrat because their largest city, Portland, sways the state. It's very similar here. We've seen movements here uh, basically to have, um, and, and what I'm talking about here is Illinois, where Chicago is basically a massive blue city and most of the state is red. We have seen uh, attempts as well to, let's say, break off parts of Illinois and merge them into Wisconsin or other states that surround us. So, so this is a very interesting thing. We're going to see where this goes, but I think this is just more and more evidence, uh, essentially, that, that Russia has been doing a very effective job of a essentially swaying people over. If you have, let's say, serious doubts on the government or you have no faith or trust in the government whatsoever, you are a perfect target. And now I know I'm going to hear from a lot of people, Nick, you ignorant slut, you know, like, like, you know, this, this is bullshit, blah, 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 blah. I understand where you're coming from. I really do. I'm simply pointing this out. And we have to objectively look at the evidence. You may completely hate the U.S. government. You may not trust it, whatever it is. Even if you're living here, I can understand that. I can. We have freedom of expression here in the United States. But it really, really, really behooves all of us to objectively Look at all evidence when it's uncovered. So, for example, the Internet Research Agency's ad campaigns is essentially not in dispute. I mean, we even know the address of the building they were sending these things from. And so you've got to make sure that you're reading multiple sources on multiple things every day. I, I basically read, honestly, and people are like, how do you find you know, the memes? How do you find all of this information? I read about 40, 50 sources every single day from around the world. Uh, basically, major first-tier publications from outside of the United States, obviously in the United States, and on and on and on. I try to read both sides, but I also try to just get the facts. I don't really care about the hyperbolic sides, you know, of any debate. I just want the information so I can make up my own mind. So there you go. Please read more. I think it's so, so important. So there you go. That is your news of the day. I'm looking forward to the hate comments I'm about to get, but 
it's kind of the nature of what it is. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, stay educated, and please attempt to stay private. Thanks, everyone.